Get ready for Cindy Davis and Friends presents My Story, His Glory, featuring your host, Cindy Davis and Whitney Montgomery. Thank you for tuning in to Cindy Davis and Friends presents My Story, His Glory. My co-host Whitney is on vacation. Well, by the grace of God, my guest today, Evan George Vazuros, overcame the symptoms of Down syndrome and defied the odds of becoming an actor in a major Netflix series. Take a look. Evan George Vizorios, a born-again Christian, native of El Paso, Texas, was born with Down syndrome, a genetic disorder in which a person is born with an extra copy of chromosome 21 that alters the course of some physical development and abilities. Right before Evan's big break on the Netflix series Ozark, he was involved in a life-threatening car accident that shattered his jaw and left him crippled and unable to walk for months. But by the grace of God, not only did he recover, but landed a recurrent role on the Netflix series Ozark. And thank you. Welcome, Evan, and welcome, Christian. Thank you. Crystal yes. Martinez. Thank you. Thank you, thank for, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you. Evan, why don't you give a big shout out to all your social media friends? <laughs> Well, I just want to thank, uh, well, most and foremost, first comes my family, my mom, my dad, my brother, my sister-in-law, my nephews, and my niece. They come first. My friends, um, I, I appreciate all my friends. Yes. I really, I really do. Because, well, go ahead. Without your friends, you know, I mean, I saw your big shout out Facebook to your uh, out your your shout out to your Facebook friends was just awesome. Yeah, like I can um, tell you have a passion for all of your friends. <laughs> I also want to uh, introduce Crystal Martinez. Crystal Sorry. is uh, Evans' acting coach. How did y'all meet? We met uh, through the conventional way as an acting coach. I held a workshop, and he was one of the uh, 10 to 12 students that came in that day. Mm -hmm. And he had contacted me uh, prior to registering and asked a few questions here and there. And, and, and I, I'd heard about him through the community. I guess other people had mentioned that he had been mentioning me on Facebook, but I'd never met him personally. So he made it to a workshop. And uh, after speaking to him and seeing, number one, that he was passionate, but more importantly, that he was talented, that he definitely had acting talent, mm. um, after that workshop, I approached him and, and said that I would like to work with him. And, and that's kind of where it all began. Um, with, with Evan's Down syndrome, what obstacles did he have to face in order to overcome that, to become an actor? Primarily for, for, for him, uh, mm -hmm. because he is higher functioning and, um, you know, you often, I think I mentioned to you earlier, oftentimes you forget that he even has a d disability, He's, you know, um, by the grace of God, he, he is higher functioning, and so his his disability maybe isn't as, as strong as others with Down syndrome, mm -hmm. but uh, so one of the biggest obstacles that he faces in terms of acting is memorization. So um, that's one of the things that pretty consistently we're always having to work on is, is running lines getting him to concentrate and to memorize and um, you know and, and for him the the nerves that we would all get on yeah. in front of the camera yeah. um, and on a set uh, will will cause his memory will cause him memory loss to a greater degree mm -hmm. and so we have to really focus on making sure that the lines are are 100 percent in his head and then from there just getting him to calm down and after his second or third episode with Jason, he started feeling at, at home and as a, a part of the family, and I think that that became less of an issue. And when you say Jason? Jason Bateman. Jason, Jason Bateman. Bateman. Jason right, Bateman, right, that's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he handpicked him, actually. He, oh. Uh, he and I spoke, and he told me that he handpicked Evan. Um, he saw his audition, and he, he decided that Evan was the one that, to play uh, Tuck on Ozark, on Netflix. Wow, that's the grace of God. Mm -hmm. it is. Awesome. What inspired you to act? Uh, well, it's a long story. Um, my my good friend, back in 2010, I never knew I could be an actor. Mm -hmm. And she had a student project for the Art Institute of Houston. And uh, she inspired me. Well, I can, she always tells me, I can do whatever I want. Uh -huh. I can, I can do whatever is in my heart. So, and I, and after I worked on a student project, on a brutal, um, I decided on my behalf, 
you know, I want to be an actor. 2011, I, f I followed Crystal on Facebook, um, uh, w talking about her workshops and classes. And so back in 2012 of December, I took a workshop. And I, I asked Crystal if I could possibly maybe take classes at her school. And from there, I've been there ever since, mm -hmm. five Indeed. years. So y'all are not only just, you're not only just his acting coach, you're his friend. As Absolutely. Well. He's part, he's, he pretty quickly became part of the family. We ended up uh, working on several other projects uh, that he became involved in. And that was the, he was asked to speak at the Buddy Walk, which is a Down Syndrome uh, charity event. For, and the first year that he did it, uh, both my two children, myself, and several of his friends and Evan, we all got together, and, and I think at that point, working outside of just the acting and, and film industry, mm -hmm. uh, we went from friends and from, from acting coach and student and, and became a family, and it's kind of been that way ever since. Evan, did you ever think that, that your, your dreams would come true to become an actor with having Down syndrome? Well, I mean, it's, okay, for, for, for most, like, uh, I, I never knew that I could see my, my future I, because I used to work at a grocery store, I wasn't very happy with it, oh. and so uh, because I was a clerk, and, oh, okay. and I've been working at the grocery store since 2003, and ever since I I quit because back in 2016, I was in a car crash, and my work wanted me back, and I couldn't because I was crippled, I had a my mouth was sh sh shut, wired shut. My neck, and I was crippled from the car crash, and I just, I didn't want to go back to work. And I, and the only thing that I wanted to do with my future is acting. Acting is my heart. I'm not, see, I'm gonna be honest too, is that my brother and my sister-in-law, they're married, and my mom and my dad, they're married. The only wife I have is my acting career. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's That's my wife. passion. Wow. I choose my wife. You know, you got to put a lot into that. You got to put a lot into it if that's if that's your whole life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and it's funny because everybody in the Houston film industry um, is very friendly. Some of them can be, but um, all of them that I worked with before um, are, are nice. Um, everybody in the acting class is awesome. I mean. We're friendly. We're like family. It's called OGAC. OGAC. O -G Ongoing acting classes with Crystal Martinez, but we shortened it to OGAC pretty early on, um, and it, the name just kind of stuck. That's the, that, and that's my acting school. That's where he and I he, he and I met. I think that's awesome. I think that's wonderful. Yeah. Tell me about. We're going to go back to that um, to that car crash that you had. Um, so right before your big break on Ozark. Right you were involved in a car accident that uh, you had to be actually life flighted right. to yes, the hospital. Mm -hmm. And um, and tell us what happened after that. You said you were crippled for... So basically what happened was me and my friend David Bromo, mm -hmm. he's an actor himself too, mm -hmm. but um, he wanted to support me in a movie that we were going to go to. We were a little... Uh, we were late to get premiere, premiere. Mm -hmm. and so we left my house, and all I remember putting my seatbelt on, and uh, all I remember is waking up in the hospital. And, but my mom said, like, uh, we were in a car crash. We got hit. We got T-boned. Wow. So I, I was a passenger, and my friend David Romo, he got it worse than I did. I, I just that is so. Sad. So sad, but wow. But, but I, 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 you know what? I told God, I told him in the hospital how thankful I am to have friends because uh, nobody, I mean, they got together and helped each other out to find us, but just knowing that God is in, in, in control. In control. And I, I know that a lot of people um, will help us even though they took their time and effort yes. during that night, they should be sleeping. 
you were guys. expected at the they were expected at the premiere and they never made it um obviously they never made it in so by around 11 or 12 o'clock midnight i caught wind of it through his friend uh, that he mentioned, Anna, and you mean the premiere of Ozark? Through, no, this is through the premiere of a different film that he oh, did. Oh, this oh, is okay. prior to Ozark. Oh, even. I see. Okay. And uh, so they were going to a, pr a premiere of a, a local okay. thing that they had I done. So, um, so he never showed up, and everyone was trying to find out where he was, and and it was through Facebook that everyone put the word out, and I um, and. You and we eventually got a lead that someone had tracked down someone that um, that had been life lighted <laughs> to um, a hospital in downtown. I think it was Ben Tob. So um, Anna and I um, kind of we we had a couple of unknowns, and it was right around two o'clock in the morning. And I said, "Come pick me up." And she and I went to the hospital, and uh, eventually we were able to find him. And I and I remember he does he vaguely remembers, but um, I, I remember walking in and thank God he was he was you know he had a brace on and and his mouth was wired shut and it was about two thirty three o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. and um, and he just you know he, as soon as he saw me he had a, tried to smile. I don't think he was aware yet really of what had happened to him. Wow. And uh, it was yeah. it was incredible. It was just so I understand terrifying. his jaw was crushed it was right and so yeah. that had put a metal plate in right right you see and, and the thing is like my doctor my orthopedic surgeon he decided he told my mom i have i have no choice i have to put it in this you could die you want your son to die and it's like no my mom so the only way it was huge so from here kind of hurts right now oh. uh, from from here to here. So I have metal from here to here. So it's covering, it's covering my bones. It eventually, essentially crushed your jawbone, right? Is that what it, his jawbone was crushed, so they had to put a metal plate in um, to, wow. to make up for that. Yeah, wow. but everyday life, it hurts. But I just, you know, I have to realize that wow. I pray a lot and God isn't, control. I mean, I know I have in, uh, ups and downs, but I, I, I just, n knowing that I have friends that love me and that support me, and I, I just have to realize that I, I, I'm i in good hands and um, in, good hands. In, God, in God and yes. doing what I love is acting and being in class. Well, it's such a blessing that um, you were found in time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your life was spared. Right. And well, and it happened right just around the corner from his house in, in the middle of the day, which is which is the strangest thing because um, from from what we were able to put together, I think mm -hmm. uh, it might have been possible that his parents, you know, went right past the crash site and just didn't know. And didn't know. even realize right. that was, because oh they, my goodness. Right, because they, uh, you know, they were crushed, so they had to use the jaws of life to get them out, and then they were life lighted to into downtown. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, can you imagine that, that I, I can't, they had I no can't idea, right? Passing it's terrifying right for them, right. Oh my goodness. They were frantic, so uh, we, we ran into them. We, when we, we all sort of met at the hospital right around three or four in the morning, thank mm -hmm. God, and it was just, you want to know something too? Terrifying. Is that um, my friend Anna, like, um, she was behind the glass door. Mm -hmm. And um, I told the doctors, I don't want it, I don't want it, I don't want it, I don't want it. I, and, I, and my friend was freaking out because they had to put a tube down to my stomach. And you didn't, and you were crying out that you didn't want the tube. Going I don't want the tube. Here. I don't want it. And so they did it anyway. Oh, but. Yeah. That's the only way they can fix me, but just, I thank God. I, I just, I told God at the hospital, I says, you know, thank you so much for letting me be here. For sparing your life. And just like mm -hmm. knowing that I'm gonna do good for other people. Like I work for I'm Boy Free. I'm an ambassador, I love kids. The and I I boy free. I'm bully free. I'm oh bully I'm free. bully free. Mm. Oh, yeah. it's an organization uh, created by Bud Collier, mm -hmm. and uh, Evan is an ambassador, and so he speaks. He goes around to different schools and different organizations and speaks to awesome. young people. Awesome. Um, about you know anti. It's an, essentially an anti-bullying campaign, but mm -hmm. he's uh 
almost weekly he has speeches that uh, that he goes and delivers in different places. So you also not only is his acting coach, but you've also helped him with his speech, right? And, uh, right. As a as a speech therapist, right? As well, well uh, in the sense that it, the the very first speech that he ever gave was at the uh, at the Buddy Walk, right? And mm -hmm. so oh. he would he asked me if I would help him to write a speech because he'd never oh. done it before, and so okay. he would come over to the house and we we. Um, Deci decided what he wanted to say, mm -hmm. put it on note cards, and um, he would come by uh, on a regular basis. And we just sort of trained and trained until we got him to the point where he was uh, delivered the speech without too much trouble. And after doing a few of those speeches, um, he eventually didn't need me anymore. So <laughs> he was able to go on to the I'm Bully Free. Uh, and now he's done you know all of his speeches over the last year or two on his own. So wow. right, just wow. a little bit of training. And to be honest too is that, um, my director, I'm a vine bully free, but mm -hmm. you know, Crystal and her family, you know, always, you know, they always help us. Um, and, but they're part of vine bully free too. I think that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. I want to go back to your your crash, your accident, and okay. you and you were crippled for several months, and your jaw was crushed, and here you are in the hospital. But you still, where did you get that determination from and just to still go on? Did your, did your parents want you to continue? Well, um, it was something and you kept saying you wanted to get back to acting classes. Yeah. I think that the, the big motivation for him, um, if you mean in terms of getting him back to acting, was that uh, through, my, through my acting school, I placed the videos of each of the students up onto mm -hmm. um, a website, onto YouTube, where they can be seen. And so Evan was able to constantly check on Facebook and see what was going on in class. And I think uh, that was his encouragement. And uh, so he would constantly message me and say, when can I come back to class? Back. <laughs> and so I had to say, well, your mom says, he said, my mom says I can't until I can move my neck. Because he had a brace for a long time. So yeah. as soon as that brace came off and he was able to turn his neck, he called me right away and he says, I'm coming back to class next week. And <laughs> Yeah, I remember now. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. um, the, fact, now, yeah. <laughs> the fact that I remember when I got onto Ozark yeah. or Jason Bateman, um, um, I didn't know anything about the audition. I just, uh, they surprised me. So <laughs> with an audition, but awesome. I, I came back. That's what Crystal said. Otherwise, you would have been just but too horrified. <laughs> right? I, I was, I was yeah, still probably. crippled. But uh, Crystal says, hey, after class, I have an audition for you. And so she told the class that, I, um, that there's an audition for me. So um, afterwards, we did the audition after class. And just um, uh, I didn't know what it was. So she told me, it's really big. It's huge. And I'm like, mm -hmm. OK. So I went home trying to think what it was. And so my talent agency said, Evan, we got some uh, exciting news for you. You got the part to play the role of Tuck. In How Oz did you celebrate? Ozark. I was excited. I was like <laughs> crying, just like my heart was, I, th I thought my heart dropped into the ground. <laughs> wow. So I had to say, you know what? In my head, I said, you know what? I'm going to call Crystal. I'm going to call Crystal. <laughs> And I, like 15 times, I'm going to call her Crystal. So, and I, and I yeah. did. Well, tell us about Ozark. Go ahead, Evan. So, tell Ozark us. is a... Your uh, character. You play Tuck. Tuck. So, yes, play Tuck. my character. Yes, your character. Is Tuck. It, yeah, sure, you can tell a little bit. Huh? <laughs> Just a little bit. So, uh, basically, uh, my character uh, is working... In the, in the Ozarks. Why? Work, you work, he works at a, at a, uh, a restaurant. And what's the name of the restaurant? The Blue, Blue Cat. The Blue Cat Lounge. Yeah, the Blue Cat yeah. Lounge. Okay. And, and so his character, you become friends with Jason Bateman, the little boy who plays Jason Bateman's son. Sailor. Right. Yeah. And how old is your character, uh, about how old is your character oh, on the, the show? Same age range. Yeah. I think it's the same age. Oh, like maybe a bit thing. younger than, mm -hmm. you know. Because Evan looks young, obviously, so maybe right, you know, 30s, early 30s, 30s maybe mm -hmm. late 20s. Which you are in your in your 30s, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Well, you look. But yeah. whenever. Uh, Great. <laughs> he does. Whenever uh, Ozark, uh, you know, like I kind of realize, it's funny. This morning, uh, Katie Magazine, uh, Katie Texas, uh, oh, yeah. 
email me and they said, hey, we want to spotlight you oh. for the October issue. I'm like, oh, awesome. That was this morning. I'm like, wow. <laughs> Same day as the TV interview. <laughs> Good thing I'm so happened. glad to have you. I'm yeah. glad to have you here and you also. Thank you. Thanks so much Crystal. for having us. I, um, can you tell me about what it was like when you were on the set? Do you have your own trailer? Yes, uh, do you like the lunch? <laughs> what do they call, what do they call what your trailer? Do they, what do they call your trailer? Triple trailer? banger. Triple banger. <laughs> oh, triple banger. <laughs> it's, it's, a tra it's a trailer that's got three different, uh, it's one of the larger trailers, so he, he had a pretty, it was a big deal. He had a, uh -huh. he had quite a nice little trailer for himself. So. Oh, you got yeah. your own trailer sure too? Did, yeah. Yes, yeah. He shared it with you two go. other people. So yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. It was what was it like to be on the set with Jason Bateman? Well, okay. First off, first season, mm, Crystal gave me a, a lot of pointers for the when the first time that, that she went because I bought a coach out. So um, talking to Jason Bateman mm -hmm. about the set. Um, I said, well, I didn't know if I was allowed to, but <laughs> I said, I like it, Central, at Central Intelligence. And it was like, so I remember we ended the conversation because it was about Ozark. So I wasn't, I didn't want to go yeah. too far yeah. about his career uh -huh. because it's basically, I'm working on Ozark. Uh, but I got too excited because I was working with Jason Payton. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned mentioned because Jason had a role in the in Central Intelligence, and oh, Evan had just okay. seen the movie. So when when this role on Ozark came about with Jason, mm -hmm. he was just you know over over the moon that he was going to have a chance to work with Jason, and he had just seen the movie. So at the end of the so, first yeah. day uh, that they shot, I I flew out there to to coach him, and at the end of the first day, that was one of the things that he said to Jason was, "I loved you, and remember, I yes. loved you, and you <laughs> tell her." So I took it. I said, I loved you in Central Intelligence with uh, uh, Kevin, uh, Hart. Kevin Hart. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. And, and The Rock. Big kick out of that. <laughs> but but yeah. I kind of realized um, we ended the conversation because um, when Crystal was there, she says, Stop. Let's go. Let's go. You got to work. You are, a, you are a testament of what God can do through you if you would just allow him. Mm -hmm. And it, um, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your story yes, for his glory. It's such a blessing to have you both. Thank you so much for having us. Oh, you're very welcome. Mm -hmm. And I want to thank you for tuning in to Cindy Davis and Friends presents My Story, His Glory. If you want to contact us, you can go to mystoryhisglorytv at gmail.com. Until next time, God bless. Mm -hmm.